In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this looping kinetic type animation in After Effects. Okay, let's get started. We start with a new comp, 24 frames a second, call it 01 wave text. I'm gonna pop this in my pre-comps folder as this will be a pre-comp and I'm super anal. Add white text. I'm using Gotham Ultra. Size 400. And then manually kern. I actually like kerning, so this isn't a chore for me. I quite enjoy it. Then center the text. Here's a handy shortcut for making sure your text is centered on screen. Press Control Alt Home to center the anchor point, then Control Home to center in screen. Boom. Next, convert your text to a shape layer by right clicking and selecting Create, Create Shapes from Text. Then check the 3D layer box to make it 3D. I typically do this as you have more animation options with shape layers. We've still got our text layer there if we want to go back to it. Next, we want to extrude our text. To do this, you need to make sure you're using the Cinema 4D Renderer. In your composition settings, you can change it here in the 3D Renderer tab. If you watched my last tutorial, you'll already be familiar with Cinema 4D Renderer. Essentially, it allows you to do basic 3D within After Effects. In this case, I'm using it to have our text expand out of this line here. So the width of the line will be whatever thickness we give our text. In Geometry Options, set the extrusion depth to 30. We want to rotate it, so we'll center the anchor point to half the extrusion depth, which is 15. Maths. Next, to make it easier to track durations, I'm going to switch from time code to frames display on my timeline by control clicking it. Next, keyframe the rotation on the X. I'm setting a value of 90 on frame 50 and minus 90 on frame 10. Then easy use the keyframes by selecting them and pressing F9. We get this where the line moves because of the perspective on the letters. To get rid of the perspective, we're going to add a camera, but essentially give it a zoom lens rather than normal 35mm or wide. Create a new camera, then give the Z position a value of minus 200,000. Now the camera is a huge distance away from our text, so we'll compensate by entering a positive same value for the zoom of 200,000. And that fixes the perspective. Next we'll drag our comp into a new comp and name it O2 Time Displace. Change your renderer back to classic, then add an adjustment layer with the shortcut Control Alt Y and add the time displacement effect. We need to set a map for this effect, so we'll create a new shape layer, rename it Time Mat, give it a gradient fill from white to black with a start value of minus 600 and an end value of 600. This layer doesn't need to be visible, so we can turn it off and we're gonna rename our adjustment layer Time Displace. Then we'll select that layer and check Effects and Masks and then set Max Displacement to 0.3. As you can see here, it looks blocky and pretty basic without going into a whole nerdy deep dive explanation of time remapping. Basically the step in is After Effects looking at the luma of the matte layer and then depending on the time resolution, you'll get bigger or smaller steps but we can smooth out those steps. I realize if you're new to this effect, it might make your brain hurt. Do me a favor, go away and try to understand Tenet, then come back. This is a bit less painful now, isn't it? Okay, let's carry on. First, we'll increase the comp frame rate to 240. This is gonna give us a load of frames so we can time remap this asset later if we want to. Then we'll increase the time resolution of our effects to match it. But it's really gonna slow down After Effects and put a strain on the computer. So we're going to pre-render this element. Set the work area to 400 frames and we'll render a ProRes Alpha by adding our comp to the render queue and setting it to high quality with Alpha. With straight unmatted Alpha. And hit render. Then have a cup of tea. While this is rendering, let me very quickly say, if you like this tutorial, please help me help you. <laughs> you know what to do. I've got loads more tutorials planned. Okay, let's finish this off. Oh, another hot tip. I always save my project with a live render queue, meaning I always save before I render and then revert when it's finished. That way, if you need to make changes to that render down the line, spoiler alert, we will, you don't have to faff around re-adding it to your render queue. Anyway, with that done, we'll import our ProRes render of the wave type. We'll create a new comp for our final sequence, set the frame rate to 24 frames a second, and check that we're on classic 3D then name our sequence Wave Looping Kinetic Type. If you're anal like me, tidy your project. Then drop your pre-render into your new master comp. Set the end of the work area by using the shortcut N, then preview to check your render. I'm just dropping the comp resolution to half so I can preview things quicker. Here I'm going to import a random image I found where I'm gonna steal the colors. 
create a new solid with whatever color you want. Then call it BG for background. I'm gonna lock it so I don't accidentally move it. Next, select your wave type and hit Control Alt T to enable time remapping. We want it to loop, so we'll add an expression. Alt click on the time remap stopwatch. Then enter this loop out cycle expression. If we enable show post expression graph, we can then see how that looping will work in our graph editor. Next, so we can easily check our animation loops. I'm going to add a marker to the type layer by selecting it and hitting the asterisk key on the number keypad. Then add timeline markers by dragging them in from the right here. Placing them exactly where my loop keyframes are, and I now have a one for the start and two for the end. Then I'm setting the end of my work area to be the last frame before that end keyframe. That way we should get a seamless loop with no doubled up frames. We want to use the number keys on our keyboard to toggle between our loop points so we can check that our animation loops seamlessly. To do that, we need to go to Edit, Preferences, 3D, and then make sure that this top checkbox isn't checked. Next, we'll duplicate our layers. To spread them out evenly, first I'll use the shortcut apostrophe key to turn on title safe. Then duplicate the type layer and move the top one to near the top and the bottom one down. Then to evenly distribute, select all of them and hit the distribute layers vertically button in our align panel. They're a bit big in frame, so I'll add a null, parent all the layers to that null, then scale it down. Now all that's left to do is stagger them in the timeline so the wave effect travels from top to bottom. Then add a drop shadow to give the text some depth. And finally, adjust the time remapping in the graph editor. I'm just tweaking the curves here so the wave text hangs for a little bit longer in the middle. Timing tweaks like this are a lot easier to do when the asset's pre-rendered. And you can also see the benefit of using the looping expression, as you only have to change one set of keyframes, then copy and paste those keyframes onto the other layers. And we end up with this. A student asked me how this was done, so this tutorial is me just offering up one way. Sorry I can't credit whoever did it, as I don't know. If everyone does, please do shout out in the comments. Anyway, remember earlier on when I said it's good practice to save a live render queue? Taking another look at this, I thought the letters would look good with a little bit more depth, and since the text is 3D, that's easy to do. So I went back to the 01 Wave Text Comp and added a front and back color and keyframed it from black to white as the text rotated. Then I re-rendered it. Live render queue! Then added a tint effect and adjusted the drop shadow slightly in the final comp. And that really is it. If you want to see the full unedited process for this animation, please check out the video in the link below and grab the free project file for this, which is on my gum road. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.